Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, the last season of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokolova. Right now, it is July 11th, 1970, and Iraq has fallen apart, apparently. I didn't realize that until I actually loaded up the game again. But, hey, it is what it is, and... Oh, yeah, actually, we can still do some of this stuff, which is nice. Which, we are going to go enlightened centrism. Everything is under control. Well, let's go with... The Monarch Stronghold. The young Italian democracy needs to be controlled only by the only party which is champion liberalism, progressivism, and all of those that a moral, proper state should have, and that party is DC. Prime Minister Fanfani must focus on making sure that all the most important factions of DC are under his wing, either through control or appeasement. In particular, we must focus on the progressive politicians closer to Moro, the centrists of the Doro Tai, and the more right wing figures of the party. So, this is a little, just a little bit more of a break from what the more slightly left wing push we were going with Fanfani. So, it is what it is, you know. Actually, Moro is still leading the liberal democracy. Yeah, we're led by Amentor Fanfani. So, it is what it is. Ah, oh, so still going up a little bit. Okay, cool. Control the Dorotai. Named as the Santa Dor Dorotei Convent in Rome, the Dorotai are sometimes considered the centrist grouping of DC, a sizable number of politicians who are moderate liberal conservatives that are skeptical of leftist parties. Somewhat hostile to a Fanfani, the Dorotai can still be reasoned with as long as we promise to pass legislation favorable to their interests, namely strengthening the relationships with the church and economic maneuvers to help the industrial upper and middle classes of Italy. Those who don't want to reason with Fanfani, meanwhile, will be condemned to irrelevance within the party. Now, before things go. Just, just a little too crazy here. Actually, I think we already had the oil crisis. Do we? Maybe not. I don't know. No, they're not killing each other yet, so we must not have the oil crisis. Do we? No, we do not, which is good. Support and CD. Hey, you're more weekly stability. Not bad. Uh, another we can do about this, which is fine. And then take over Moro, Moro's clique. Hmm. Aldo Moro is, alongside Fanfani, one of the most public and important figures of DC. And around him, a numerous groups of politicians have coalesced, made up the more progressive minded members of the party. While Fanfani himself belongs to this group of politicians, <clears throat> he must now ensure that they answer to him, not to Moro, in his ploy to further his own political clout. A few handshakes, promises, and promotions within the party should be enough to sideline Moro and make the progressive wing of the DC entirely dependent from Fanfani. Or onto him. Alright, now there it is. Gosh darn it. We should start this episode uh, with a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. Uh, why are you breaking my heart to you now every time? Oh, now let's close it out and then we'll look at the terrible things that are going to happen as a result of that. Terrible. Horrible. Improved main battle tank. Very cool. And Pasquale? Well, let's go with Anaparo. Since we did become a spy master, so. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, it's not. it could be a so much worse. Yeah, I'm actually not too, not, not too unpleased with this. 3.3, .3, you know, it went lower again. But it's the same as our debt, which or debt interest, which is you know okay. Uh, from here on out, we actually had too many civilian factories, so I'm kind of done investing in that. And we have enough political power for now, so we have more than enough. So actually, we could probably cut it. So what happens if we cut it? I'm going to keep investing in the GDP. Uh, we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Some so. Middle Eastern tensions. The current reports that we're getting from the Middle East are very worrying. Instability and unrest plagues the entire region, and if things continue like this, we may be in serious trouble. The world's main oil suppliers are located in the Middle East, and if the situation spirals out of control, we could be looking at a global oil crisis that um, of unprecedented proportions. We must act if we want to avoid this or minimize the damage to our country. Makes sense. Baatis. We don't like Baatists, do we? Um, well, as you can see, I've loaded up the game again. Oh, yeah, we're doing this up 26%. Uh, this doesn't really matter too much. I like the nuclear stuff. 51%, which is nice. Anything down here? Not really. Um, advisor level 1? Support CD shock and... Ooh. Does that ever go away? SIM unchained. It's not bad. Shackle Doro Tai, of course. Uh, civilian austerity, editing the OFN. I don't think light anti-war protests. I don't think there's any way for us to get rid of that, but okay. Enlightened centrism. Well, before we do that, let's take a look. Is there anything else we can do around here? Uh, we did this one. Let's see, all in. Contact Halal. Let's do the road to Riyadh, maybe. When looking at the chaos that has gripped the Middle East, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia stands as a striking exception, an island of instability and a sea of relative madness. Securing a position in the Middle East starts with 
shoring up our allies in the states that haven't succumbed to revolutionary fervor. Of course, we can't be sure that the current monarchy has the best interest in mind either, while they have yet to give us any reason to outright question their loyalty. We also have to expect them to act in their own interest in the coming years, thankfully. We have multiple methods of ensuring that in the long term, the interests of Riyadh don't stray too far from the interests of Rome. Some of them are going to be riskier than others, but the saying goes, fortune favors the bold. Are we playing his verbal down? Hmm. Alright, so, just in case, I'm going to do this again. Wait, did I click on that for realsies? Yeah, I did. Good. Yeah, I don't know if we can really get involved. I think it's Germany I was able to get involved down here, wasn't I? Or America, even. I want to get involved, please. Whatever. Oh, what's this? <clears throat> Fun nuclear armaments. We have five. I love it. And a new... Oh, yeah. Tough. A safe cracker. And master interrogator? I think so. Alright, so with that, I do want to finish up here the White Whale Senate itself and Lights and Centrism. Finally, the other factions of DC, which must be taken care of, are of, of the right wing. So don't you oppose to Fonfani. These are conservatives who resent their progressive turn, which Fonfani promises, and are much more friendly to the right wing parties. The only way for Fonfani to get them to play ball is to promise moderation in regards to his progressive policies, instead of pursuing a centrist agenda of limited intervention. While it's not exactly what Fonfani has in mind, it will be necessary to ensure party unity within itself. So, make nuclear weaponry. I love nuclear weaponry. A new bomb. Our rapidly expanding nuclear program has since produced its second device. We're still far away from the ability to produce or destroy entire countries in one fell swoop. We want our nuclear bombs would still make anyone think twice before daring to step on sacred Italian soil. Production of additional devices continue, and this should hopefully be the only beginnings of a nuclear arsenal that would make the world tremble, even if the cost of the program is beginning to show on our annual budget to our future success. Single weapon, multiple weapon stockpile. Um, we're doing pretty well with that, I'd say, but can we really afford this? The road to Riyadh. The Saudis have proved themselves as a key player in the opening trouble in the Middle East, with a knowledge of Arabia unparalleled by any other actors and a strong Machiavellian streak. Their kingmaker rules are recognized by anyone with a passing interest in the politics of oil. This is unfortunate for their enemies, but for us, it is an opportunity. Should we be able to build a road to Riyadh? Riyadh, maybe it's Riyadh, and line it with intrigue and bribes in equal measure, we should be able to knock the Saudis out of the war by controlling their internal politics. Such a venture could backfire, but the prospect of success is delicious enough that it cannot be passed up. We need all the allies that we can get. More extraction, why not? Enlightened centrism. Seriously, I want to get involved. I, I really, really, really want to get involved. We got involved in Oman and Iraq, but not here. Oh, you're breaking my heart. And I don't think we really do anything down here. There was those folks. All in. Rattle the sabers. Uh, desert diplomacy. Well, I will go with contact trial. Talal. The House of Saud is known for the aggressive conservative and fundamental Islamic outlook on the world, but like all groups of people, there are those you'd call black sheep of sorts. For the House of Saud, or Saad, the black sheep goes by the name of Prince Talal bin Abdulaziz al Saud. Talal is something of a liberal in a court of fundamentalists and conservatives, and has publicly advocated for careful reform in the Saudi kingdom. More importantly, he's expressed a willingness to work with Italy for the betterment of not just Saudi Arabia, for the entire Arab world. We don't know how far he's willing to go to implement this benevolent vision, but if we can get or can establish communications with him, then we can start to entertain such possibilities and determine the best path forward for both of us. Semarine at the party. The reporter in the back, a fresh-faced journalist sent to observe the spe series of speeches being done by the Prime Minister and his aides across southern Italy, raised up his instant camera and snapped a photo. The f camera flash echoed across the room, immortalizing the Prime Minister and the politician beside him with infinite or with finite medium of film. On the left side of the photo stood the Prime Minister, dressed in a fine suit and tie, extending his hands out towards a local member of the Democratia Christiana. On the right side of the photo stood that local member, a former farmer and always pious Catholic turned local politician for the city of Salerno. Captured in the back of the photo, behind Fanfani, the local politician was Prime Minister's uh, entourage, a motley assortment of babyface university graduates turned interns, grizzled party operators, and trusted sides and aides. If one could look close enough, they could see the relief in their eyes at another successful meeting. Few had suspected Fanfani's move to reconcile the party's left and right wing right would succeed, but all within the party would be glad it had. Glancing at the photo, the reporter scowled and saw that the light lighting was off. Crumpled it up, he stuffed it in his jacket pocket and began to take another one. A photo captures what words can only describe. So after that one, uh, how long is this one? If that's the case, I'm just going to do the white whale sentence. I think I read this yesterday, so if you like to read this, go right ahead. So, we get even more weekly stability, less fashion support, so, nice. That would be kind of good. On the 
bright path to the future. Cool. Contacting, contacting Talal. Talal ben Abdulaziz al Saud is an interesting character. Liberal in ideals, in ordeals, pragmatic as most Saudis are, and most importantly for us, pro Italian. Such a man can be relied on to take the Saudis out of the war. She would be able to secure his claim for the leadership of the House al Saud. In addition to this, he'd be a solid and dependable asset for any future involvement in the Middle East or Arab affairs. Contacting him will be easy because we've done so already with a number of diplomatic representatives in the Middle East having a cordial relationship with the young prince. Now, we only need to convince that her, him that her interests are aligned. If one suspects he has reached this very conclusion his own, a friend in need is a friend indeed, as some might say. After that, support the seat in the CD. Uh, let's see, we get, interest will rise in the morning Piazza Fanta. Uh, that's probably a good idea to do, but I want to get through this off first. So we'll see what happens. Brief de Martini. Uh, the various regimes and governments of the Middle East are characterized by lacking military strength of their own, and in particular, due to a lack of population and due to the corruption within their own nations, and in part due to the un admitted unpopularity of their own governments. This was a brief benefit to us, or benefit to us in times of peace, but now that the revolution and anarchy threatens them so severely, we're going to need to step in. Francisco de Martini represents the best that the Royal Army has offered. He was the most decorated soldier from the Second World War, and once again will be relying, will be relying on him, and men like him to save Italy's place in the world. By going in as international volunteers, they'll be able to protect Italy by means of protecting our allies in the Middle East, without requiring direct military interventions that would further destabilize the situation. And also, I have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Uh, I don't like politically connected. Anafanti, or whatever her name was. There, go, go, boom. We're done with that for now. Come over here. Nope. Let's grab some of this. Very, very nice. 110 billion. Not bad. Even with the oil crisis, we're doing pretty darn well. I'm glad we set, we were able to set ourselves up like this. It's very, very good for us. Very, very good. All in. It's tough not to crack. Uh, hmm. All right. Or rattle the saber. Need to be direct, much more direct. <clears throat> Italy is here. Italy is to stay. We want to abandon them. I kind of like this one because you get to throw in more divisions. So. Brief de Martini. I want to do this one. Rattle the saber. Developments in the region. Well, actually, rattling the saber. We're trying to go uh, all in. A tough nut to crack. You know, I'll, I'll screw it. This is this one. All in. We might have had our doubts to, uh, to start out, but Prince Dalal managed to thoroughly exceed our, exceeded our expectations. Over the course of the negotiations, he managed to display a growing sense of boldness and willingness to take the initiative in the advancing of his cause in the region. Of course, now that we've swayed him, it's also up to us to put that inspiration into action and make sure that it actually succeeds. A failure here would lose us the support of the only the stable ally in the region discredit us globally. But if everything goes according to plan, we'll be able to stabilize both the situation and bring the Middle East into the modern age as well. The time for caution has passed. It's time for us to, to make fortune favor us. Brief de Martini. Francisco de Martini has proven himself as one of Italy's greatest assets in East Africa and the Middle East. Not only as a military man, but also in more subtle pursuits. The attempt to pull off a coup amongst the Saudis must involve him. In coordinating with Talal on behalf of Italy, we can trust a line of communications which is efficient and can respond quickly to changes in the situation. Once a man is brief, we'll be here to make our move and see whether luck is with us. A faithful officer, a new bomb. We already have this. We already read this earlier this episode. What the heck? Um. All right. All in, it's tough not to crack. The Saudis are not the easiest group to break into, but if we manage to break them, what rewards await? We are in constant contact with the Talal al Saud, and he in turn is ready to make contact with well placed officers in the Saudi military and attempt to weaponize them in favor of a coup which will place him in power. Working with them through De Martini, we can discuss a Talal with Talal a number of options to bring the officers in line. The simplest is to bribe them, and if necessary, promise them rewards to come. The second option is to enlist them in to the coup, although this would require them to disclose a good deal of information. The third is to invite them to a hotel meeting where and do whatever is necessary to make sure they do not interfere. Time presses, and we should ask Dan Martini to pass on a suggestion. He'll pay off the officers to a nice hotel and deal with them there. Uh, we could do that. Uh, paying them off would not be bad, but, you know, if we pay them off now, someone else could pay them off later. I don't like that. Hmm, let's deal with them. Maybe. That's probably a bad idea. Desert diplomacy. With the policy is set in place and path forward for Italy decided, it's time that we focus on gathering our allies in the region and figuring out what the plan is after peace is restored. It isn't just about putting down a revolution after all. And after everything that's happened, we're going to need to reignite faith in Italian hegemony. We need to be the ones to approach our allies, both current and former, once this is all over. After showing our strength, we also need to show some level of benevolence and mercy going forward. We've already shown them the stick, but the carrot is equally as important. Closer to the king. The reigning king of the Saudis takes his very name from the house of which he belongs. Saud bin Abdulaziz al Saud's rule has not been without merit, after all. Maintaining neutrality in the original situation was no easy thing, yet nowadays, he looks weak, and his licentious character spending and spending has not endeared him to his kinsmen or his common Arabs within his domain. And cracking the Saudis 
and we shall have to construct a strategy regarding King Saud. A meeting with him has been arranged. It is not too late, despite everything, to call off the affair should the situation not be in our favor. Otherwise, we may request an urgent meeting, moving as quickly as we possibly can, or arrange one, but with less urgency, allowing us to be better prepared. Call for a meeting, call an urgent meeting. Request a meeting and prepare. We gotta be ready for this stuff. Alright, so it looks like this is probably bugged. Maybe that we keep getting the same one over and over and over, so. Oh, the Dominant Faction is on the conservative wing. It is what it is. Cool, time for coffee, though. The officers move in. In the course of the meeting with King Saud and Talal sitting together in an atmosphere of the greatest tension, the officers of the Saudi military have moved into the room. We prepare for the scenario and pass on instructions to Talal should the most provocative of moves occur in the king's presence. We could ask him to play one of three roles in the meeting, to take Saudi Arabia out of the war, once and for all, to force abdication, uh, and proclaim Talal al-Saud king, or serve only as mediators between the men, working to achieve a sense of sentiment but more by bartering entry than brute force. I kind of want to force the king's abdication. Let's try it. Even though I want to be relatively more diplomatic, I think that's a little more fun. And the Kusik's Gate, look at that! His Majesty Talal bin Abdulaziz al Saud, King of Saudi Arabia, has formally approached Italy to discuss the ongoing situation in the Arab world. Talal's coup has succeeded. We've secured a most crucial pawn in the ongoing battle for the Middle East and its bounty. The Saudis' exit from the war is now a foregone conclusion. Italy must now press its advantage to its full extent. We have cracked the House of Saud. Hey, Talal bin Abdulaziz al Saud. Hello there, my friend. Defenders of the Um, Salafi Ascendancy, the Kingdom of Black Gold, Arco ENI Memorandum of Understanding, and of course they have the oil presses just like everyone else. And now we can do this stuff, bolster this stuff, uh, fuel gain, necessary evils. I'd like to do this stuff, but I'm going to keep going down this way first. Let's mourn the Piazza Fonta. The tragedy of the Piazza Fonta has left a deep wound in the collective consciousness of all of Italy. It's time of the, the time of it is a time of the wound that will never likely fully heal, but perhaps with passing the time and earnest efforts on our part to solve the underlying issues that led to this event, we can at least ensure that the wound does not become infected. Plaques will be set up. Portraits of those who died in the bombing will be hung on the walls of the Prime Minister's residence in the Palazzo Chigi and the President at the Palazzo del Chiranal. There will be time for changes and debates soon enough, but for now the people of Italy stand side by side in the wake of the tragedy. Hopefully well, such a spirit of national unity would not crumble into dust. That would be a further tragedy, and who would... And it would mean that those two who died did so in vain. If you not come together now, then when? <clears throat> ah, very good. Let's go and survey for a little uh, project, please. Thank you. Very good. And then we shall uh, let's revamp the export infrastructure. How is international trade carried out in this brave new world that we find ourselves in? The answer is largely the same as it always been, carried on over on roads and seas by boats. The only major difference now is how we conduct trade to, compared to our Roman forebears is that we likely possess the power to soar through the blue sky like eagles in our steel airplanes. If we want to have an export industry that rivals the major powers, then we need to pour all the funds we can muster into our roads, airports, and docks. Of course, of the three, the airports should have the highest priority. After the gosh darn Atlantropa forever destroyed our access to the Adriatic, Adriatic Atlantic, our seaborne trade has decreased significantly, only kept alive by the control of Suez. Airplanes, on the other hand, have no such restrictions and will surely be the transport method of the future. The Cathedral Shrine. For the priests and clergy who served in the Milan Cathedral during the era known as the Cold War, they would forever carry on one memory with them. It has begun mere hours after the first news came out of the Piazza Fonta bombing. A man dressed in formerly fine suit, one now caked with dust, debris, and other bits of clutter, stumbled into the church. The clergy looked on with a grave concern as he entered, unsure the man should be in the church or in the hospital. To those present, uh, to those presents, imminent surprise, the man did not move uh, to pray. Instead, he took the hat off his head and placed it in the center of the church's foyer, and, and next to him he placed a simple picture of one of the victims. Out of respect, the clergy placed several candles to mark the spot and assumed nothing more would come of it. Over the next couple months, they would be proven dead wrong. At first, it came as a trickle. Survivors, families, friends, anyone else involved. With each visit, the shrine slowly grew. Soon it turned into to a flood, and as many people had no connection to the tragedy other than a shared sense of hopelessness came and added to the shrine. It grew steadily, soon attracting the attention of not only the press, but even the Prime Minister himself. In a photograph shown across the world, Prime Minister Fanfani visited the shrine, personally lowering his head in solidarity with the lost. <clears throat> While the shrine eventually was taken down and cleaned up, and for some time even forgotten, the clergy present would never forget it. Decades after the bombing and its aftermath, not a single member of the clergy had even once thought about throwing away the photo taken of them with the Prime Minister. History lives with those who witness it. Let's see. Oof. Sorry. Sometimes I crack my back as I'm, uh, you know, sitting here for TNO, so... And sometimes I just crack it really nice. Oof. 
Oh, baby. So, promise results. The people have demanded answers for the horror of the Piazza Fonta. They've just made answers from us and answers we shall give them. We cannot afford to. It would destroy our credibility in the eyes of all, and our opponents would seize on our failures for our own benefit. For their own benefit, really. That is why all the resources at our disposal, civilian and military, public and secret, shall be mustered to answer every question about the incident. Who planned it? What was its motive? Was there outside support? What was the goal? At present, there are many subversive groups who may have perpetrated their, this heinous crime. The fascists willing to kill in order to bring back their old regime, or maybe the commies, eager to take advantage of the uh, national turmoil to back their agenda. It could even be the other groups of which we are unaware. Whoever it was, they shall be discovered and punished. Truth for the living, justice for the dead. And everyone is dead. Well, some people are. All right, let's go with this. One. Eh, not go with that one. That stuff is. We're actually looking pretty good for this stuff, actually. So how about better artillery? Always better artillery. There we go, my friends. And after that, we should probably do a new campaign for education. For better or for worse, the world our children are will inherit is far different than the world of our parents and grandparents. It is a world dominated by science and technology and mathematics. We need to invest into our future. We need to invest in education across the country. We need to build new schools, hire more teachers, establish strong, higher, stronger standards, and begin the process of preparing the next generation of Italian workers, leaders, and thinkers to bring Italy into the modern age. Anyone with the initiative to succeed in education should be allowed to. And with new programs to expand access to education at the early level to all, they will have their opportunity. DC has promised a better tomorrow, and a better tomorrow it shall deliver. We got quite a bit of political power, not going to lie. Point six one's not great, but we already have quite a bit. Uh, we're sorry to interrupt your regularly broad, uh, scheduled broadcast. The PM appeared in his office. The king's flag is visible behind his back, smiling and walks towards the camera. The sl shot slowly zooming in to focus on his upper torso and head. He begins to speak. Now, I'm sure many of you are less than pleased to have me interrupt your football game or TV drama, but if you'll just let me a minute of your time, I'm sure you'll find it worthwhile. There's been much uncertainty and fear recently over the growing terrorist attacks and violence within our nation's streets. I'm here to assure you that the government is doing everything possible to protect our citizens and find the cause of this rampant lawlessness. The image changes, and now several clips begin playing in succession of one another. The police are seen on patrol, each one dressed in an impressive uniform and brandishing a rifle. Next to an Italian family shown enjoying a midday meal outside, and the children smile and play as the parents look at each other free of worry. Finally, several successive scenes are shown of various investigators and detectives working, each one carefully and analytically completing their investigation. The scene changes back to the PM, who is now smiling at the camera. As you can see, the government has everything under control. I can promise that we have already begun to get to the bottom of this, and it will not be long before we return to normalcy. The screen fr freezes on a smile, and a small signature appears in the bottom left corner of the screen. This message has been approved by the office of the Prime Minister. Oh boy. Anything other technology in nine days? Yes, so. Which is totally fine with me. And foreign policy plans. The new DC administration in Rome has begun to put together concrete plans for its international policy going forward. While in the past, the empires relied on military force and imperialism in dealing with foreign nations to compel compliance and obedience, Pompani is another way in mind. Rather than presenting ourselves as brutes only interested in our own gain at the expense of all others, Italy should all strive to find its place in the world staying or standing behind or beside its partners in trade and diplomacy. Diplomacy and trade are not zero-sum games when played correctly. They can lead to the benefit of both players when one is willing to play honorably and amicably. We should strive to conduct ourselves not as the Roman Empire, but of Venice, of not of conquering, not of not of conquering dictatorship of fascism, but now going democracy of Christian values. Nice. Let's grab some of this too. The Fanfani Education Initiative. The Prime Minister stood with his entourage as a ribbon cutting ceremony. Oh, if you like to be academic base, please go right ahead. But you know, there's something to be celebrated. The university class this year sat in the audience watching. At the podium in the center of the stage, a professor, carefully vetted by the man's aides, gave a gripping speech to the students in attendance. He spoke of the virtues of moderation and Catholic modesty in the face of soulless communist materialism and hateful fascist nationalism. Every syllable going in over the head of the thoroughly bored student body. In the back, reporters gathered to snap a photo of the moment. The Prime Minister, getting the oversized ribbon and bow placed before him, a symbolic ceremony to celebrate the opening of the campus's newest building. In the far in the corner of the assembled students, under the cover of an old tree, two of the school's more left-leaning students sat observing the spectacle. They joked together and mocked the speech being given, each one equal parts amused and agitated by the professor's dry speech on the evils of an ideology he clearly, clearly knew little about. For them, it was all in a pleasant enough way to spend half an hour. Eventually, the professor stepped down from his podium and the band present stuck up, struck up the national anthem. With a broad smile, the Prime Minister received an oversized pair of scissors and moved forward to cut the oversized ribbon. As it split in two, the stage was covered by an opera of camera flashes as reporters finally had their shot. When it was all over and done, the two students before remained seated under the tree. To the annoyance of one, his comrade and mockery had remained completely silent throughout the entire ribbon cutting. It took some pressing, but eventually the man gave his answer in a low voice, not daring to meet his friend's gaze. I was already to mock it as well. But 
Then I thought about my younger cousin. They don't have the money to go to university on their own, but without the help of the government, I despise that pig fan funny, but I can't despise the good that may come of this. The complication of radicalism. A new bomb. Again, for the third time. Like, I get it, we want to make more bombs, guys, but... I'm not saying you, but just, like, Italy. Scientists, you've done this again and again, but we'll do the efforts of peace. Three men sat around a circular mahogany table while polished and clean in the office of the Prime Minister. On the left side sat a stern man from Vienna, a former fascist. Facing was a younger, somewhat disheveled uh, FD representative who was well known for suspected communist sympathies. Across from both and between both representatives sat Fani, sat Fan Fani, who had called both of these two partisans in order to hammer out some sort of agreement or arrangement regarding the precarious civil situation within the country. Piazza Fonte had made it clear that the growing tensions between the political groups had was becoming a clear danger to state stability. If communists and fascists pushed each other too far, but Bonnie didn't need to spell it out for the two gentlemen. As the night wore on, it was clear that, that nothing concrete had been established, but Fanfani thought to himself as he watched the cars pull away, they'd agreed on a second meeting. Perhaps all that was a victory after all. Well, we'll see about that. Ten nuclear weapons? Man, making only one at a time is kind of slow. Invest in the Middle East. Not a bad idea. And... We should have another event. If not, I'll, I'll read this one too. Okay, invest in the Middle East then. In the modern age of the so-called Black Gold is King, it fuels our planes, cars, trains, and our tanks and helicopters. Fortunately for us, we have a good percentage of the planet's entire stock under our own control. It is like an economic genius to see the obvious profit we, we stand to make. Of course, as it stands now, we have a good deal of money to make from the Middle East, but why stop at half measures? The profit we could be making if only we put in more resources is developing the region that would make us the envy of all the world with our wealth. Good. Hmm. So there was no event. We all advanced together. Not bad. A new age of diplomacy. Christian capitalism. Not bad. An ethical empire. Wow, we get a lot of political power. <clears throat> and unhappy triumvirate. Which we'll read in just a little bit, and we'll grab this one first. So, the three men sat together at the press conference, each one facing each other in a half circle of chairs. To the right of sat Achille Loro. To the left, Giuseppe Saragat, in the center of the Prime Minister. They smiled for the cameras and promised that unity and stability was in reach, but deep down, each one was more unsure than the other two. If the reporters could have seen their thoughts, perhaps tomorrow's paper would have been quite different. <coughs> no matter how I think about it, I can't just help feeling a little disgusting, a little disgusted with that man to the right of the Prime Minister. Isn't he a friend of the Las Duce Galetzi Oceano? Surely such a man's hands cannot be completely clean in this whole ordeal. I wish Fanfani would stop associating with him. Saragat thought to himself. This entire gesture is ridiculous. We're campaigning for unity when we should be crushing those protesting Reds in our streets. If only I would have won the last election. I'm sure Saragat must be thinking the same thing, thought Laurel, Laurel to himself. At least they're both willing to do this. I can only hope the political blowback from the rest of the party won't be too severe. Oh, the press wants a photo. The Prime Minister thought to himself. Leaving their own thoughts beyond, the three men smiled off for the camera, but not one of their smiles reached their eyes. Truly a gesture of great unity, and the eagle soars to, aid, to our aid. Uh, and a diplomatic communique from Washington, our greatest hope, uh, have been answered. The U.S. has agreed to commit to direct action in the Middle East by deploying the combat troops and providing additional funds, advisors, and material. Ooh, look at that. This is a great day. With the full might of the U.S. military behind us, there's no way the Saudis or the pan Arabias could take control of the Middle East. In a couple of years, we'll have reestablished our control over the region, and our future as the world's oil provider will be sure. All that remains is to get our boys ready and make our way into the sands. Once the dust has settled, the Middle East and a new age of prosperity will once again be under grasp. The gravy days are on their way. Oh, I love it when America gets involved in Middle Eastern conflicts. Oh, I can't wait for any new ones. Coming for that black gold that we're so desperately needing, especially right now. Holy cow. <clears throat> so, devalue the leader. I don't want that. So, the interest will adjust to adjourn or just to around the level of the U U.S. Talk to the workers. Oh, I'll go back down here. Let's do necessary evils. <clears throat> Extraordinary times require extraordinary efforts, and extraordinary sacrifices in turn. While the colonial empire is in open revolt and chaos, we will be putting every necessary effort into crushing the violence and rebellion in the Middle East, but we will also need to prevent the mainland from experiencing a similar fate. The freedoms of speech and protest are, of course, protected in our fair democracy under most circumstances, but all freedoms have necessary and sensible limits. No respectable state would allow our citizens to spread fear, dissatisfaction, and subversive thoughts amongst our people. Fear mongering and panic inciting speech. The protest against and protest against entirely necessary government action will need to be suspended until the situation is not quite so perilous. Necessary evils now to prevent the rise of future of greater evils in the future. <clears throat> well, we'll see what happens with that.
So that's a pacifist, why not? The concept of non-violence, the idea of it, is just that. Theoretical, a concept, an idea, not something that can be meaningfully applied or utilized, much less by a state. That doesn't stop a lot of people from lacking the idea of just not fighting and advocating for it, and protests and calls to actions in the streets. Some simply hold that we are being too aggressive with the Arabs, while on the other extreme, others go even further with that idea and argue for us to simply stop, or simply putting out, pulling out of the region entirely. Obviously, either idea is absolutely ridiculous, but if popular opinion turns against Middle Eastern intervention, it could have disastrous consequences. We need to nip this in the bud while it is small enough for, small enough for us to deal with the safety with it safely. We simply can't engage in crackdowns, though the option is there when individual situations get out of hand, but instead we should need we need to convince everyone else of the absolute absurdity of being any more lenient with the Arabs than we currently are. <clears throat> but what I do like is we've got some army XP, look at that. 75, not bad. Uh, sense of protest and limited civilian oil consumption. Our difficulties in importing oil are threatening shortages nationwide. The price of fuel for people's personal use has already increased dramatically, but even the natural increase in prices have done little to make up the difference between what we can bring in and what is being used. In order to keep the apparatus of the state functional, we're going to need to institute oil rationing. Our industry and military will have priority on oil shipments, as those are the two most vital structures to the continued existence of Italy, and whatever else we have beyond that will be made available to the private sector. We won't be comfortable, but we'd rather have a dissatisfied population to whom we can make this up to later than allow the crisis to threaten the state's ability to function. Good idea. And then we shall bolster the ENI. Of all the industries that have been hamstrung by the acts of the Arabian insurgency, none are even half so vital to the day-to-day -day operation of our Italian life, industry, and military as that of our oil industry. An oil industry that has been centralized underneath the ENI, or uh, if, the, if it dies, so does Italy, so we cannot allow that to happen. What the heck game? Save the company, save the oil, save Italy. The centralized nature of the ENI is a double-edged sword, whereas one, on one hand, its concentrated nature means that if the ENI goes down, so does industry. On the other hand, we don't need to do much more than maintain the integrity of what that company if we want to avoid such a disaster, so a brief but significant influx of cash should be a, enough to keep them on their feet at least, and get more fuel game for oil, which we could actually really, really use right now. And maybe we'll go nuclear after this. This is fine. Uh, yeah, let's go nuclear after this. Limit civilian oil consumption with nuclear uh, energy. Cool. Oh, and before we do that, let's take a look, look over here. Do that. Awesome. We have 12 warheads. Going nuclear, my friends. Oil has been the foundation of Italy's economy for her industry and the lifeblood of international trade and operations, but does that always need to be the case? The crisis we currently face it made it clear that oil as fuel is inconsistent, unstable, and prone to sabotage and shortage. The more we rely on it to provide us stability, the more we at risk we are of collapse and chaos. But before, oil is the only option, but in modern days, we have alternatives. Nuclear power is not only good for bombs, regardless of what Washington, Tokyo, and Berlin might have you believe. It can be harnessed for other purposes, in particular, the providing of power to our industry, and with some research, maybe even going further than that. We can produce it within our own borders, produce it as much of we, as we need, and not risk having it denied to us by disaster in colonial regions. Potential wounds are great, but it'll take a long time to get there. But it won't become any sooner if we delay on beginning the work any further. Not bad. So we're done with this. We're done with this as well. Uh, air Doctrine. We're also done with our Air Doctrine, I believe, as well. And let's grab some of this, because we can. Jet strategic bombers, why not? Cut. Cut. Spend. Yep, we are working at a fast pace, which is nice. And then we shall be going nuclear, my friends. It is already April 5th, 1971. And I'll uh, we'll give it one more day, maybe. There we go. Nice. All right, after that, we shall do what? What shall we do? Some other stuff. Nice. I love better guns. After going nuclear, we shall do... What? Ah, R.I. Ascendant. In these times of great economic uncertainty, the people need a financial institution that acts as an anchor and foundation for the private sector. The Institutio per la Reconstruzione Industriale might be an old establishment formed in the early days of the fascist regime, but it's proven to be quite resilient over the years. In the current day and age, we will be calling the I.R.I. once more to bring some semblance of civilian continuity to the private sector. We will enact what amounts to the policy of pseudo-nationalization, using state funds and influence to maintain critical industries and organize them and their operations. We can make use of the best in private public management to maintain a sense of economic strength that will keep the people optimistic for the future. Great. And this stuff is done. Our artillery is already pretty good. We did, we're doing pretty well in armor. Oh, I'll get some better engineers because I love the engineers. That GDP growth is not bad. Not bad. This could be so much worse. But as one of the comments said from the last video, it is a little disappointing that uh, we couldn't get 
at France with us. I mean, there's you, you have a limited amount of time down there, which really sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's do that. And let's go over here. Slash, please. Thank you. Even though we're not really slashing much. <clears throat> After we go nuclear, we should do the IRI Ascendant. I love it. And then, this is all fine. Honestly, it could be worse. A lot worse, even. In spite of the war of the Middle East... Oh boy, there goes a shot. Oh crap. We have managed to maintain some level of economic stability and continuity. Things could be better, to be sure. <clears throat> but people can handle some increased prices and a bit of uncertainty in the short term. All the while, the Parliament will bicker and argue over what exactly should be done, but the important part is that the business will continue as normal, in spite of the extraordinary circumstances. If we allow things to go sideways, we'll open the door to extremism and greater violence, but as long as we stay the course and are okay with simply doing just okay... We'll make it through this together. Together we shall do it. Ah, 30% more land out attack. Don't mind me. Sign me up. I love it. Oh, uh, and actually, who's this? Who's leading Iran? Is it the woman? I don't forget her name. I forget her name. It's some Shah person. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Nope, it's the National Assembly. Ugh, too bad the guy was assassinated. Too bad, man. This is fine. This is okay, as everything's burning around us. And then we'll, we shall appeal to foreign capital. Oh, don't tell me Iran's falling apart yet. Oh, I called it. All right, so let's see. Can we intervene in their affairs? Because if there's nothing I'd like to do more except to intervene into other people's affairs. Oh, I can I get some people now? Awesome. Actually, I'll send one motorized with them, so there you go. Uh, the Republic. Do we like the Republic? Do we prefer Kurdistan? Nope. Alright, boys. Alright, so for these guys. Uh, Imperial State. I can't send anybody. God dang it. The P Persian Powder Cat explodes at last. But... A pure foreign capital. In spite of the lines drawn in the sand by the superpowers that be, the world market is more interconnected than any other point in history. And Italy's historic lack of connection to any one particular superpower has made it a centerpiece of neutral international trade. While we still fight, are still fighting to find a footing in the wake of this disaster, we can take advantage of this situation. <clears throat> There's plenty of money floating around in the spheres of the West and East, both of which want to have a position of strength and influence in the Mediterranean Middle East. We can make appeals to these corporations and trade groups to give us some funding to provide the foundation of our economic rebuilding. If we can balance out the resulting influence between East and West, hopefully we shouldn't compromise our old advantages either. Nice. Alright, so we're down here and I should have sent some planes. So, let's see. We can set up to 80, which, you know, ain't bad. 50? Mm, you know what? Screw that. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. Uh, do we have 30 fighters? We should have 30 fighters, right? You know what? I, I love, like I said earlier, I love getting involved in other people's affairs. End game. In real life, no. Leave me alone in real life, for the most part. Like, I do not want to get involved in other people's affairs in real life, for the most part. Also benefits me, of course. But, still. There you go. Go to Baghdad. Alright, boys, let's get Im involved in Iraq. <sighs> we don't send a bunch of trucks, tanks. Enrico Fratini. Uh, this guy's got more attack. Alright, boys, what we gonna do? We gonna... Uh, let's focus down here first. Spread out, spread out. Even though we like to take Baghdad, I'm gonna try to do an attack maybe right here-ish. Maybe we'll see what happens. I don't know. Let's go right there. Just go this way. Let's see what we can do. Oh, yes. Let me just, let's just let them go. I'm gonna take out those guys. These guys will be fine, probably. Actually, you guys can go that way. You just begin attacking. You know what? You can help attack over there, too. There you go. Alright, we're almost there. Very nice. Oh, I love it. Finally, we have some sort of conflict. Uh, as much as I love reading, you know, Hoi 4 TNO stuff, sometimes I need a little bit of conflict in my life to make us feel a little better, right? Right, austerity economics, though. Money's tight nowadays with the massive disruption of international oil trade following the Arab Rebellion. We don't have the cash that we'd like to. We've been hit with a massive trade deficit as a result of the disaster, and now our parliament is searching for an answer, any answer that'll keep us afloat. The most sensible solution seems to be just spend less, live in our means, really, it's simple. For all the losses we've taken into our revenue, we will make budget cuts to various social programs and efforts. For what services need to be required in the meantime, we'll, keep, we'll trust the free market to step in and fill the gaps, gaps while economic realities have left us indisposed. Not bad. Good, good, good. Uh, let's come down here actually help him out. There you go. Ah, very good. Weaponry's done. 
better anti-tank. Don't sign us up. 13 nuclear warheads. And you, for love of God, are we, oh, yes, I know, we have multiple bombs. I understand that we have bombs, but you don't have to remind me literally every single time, son. But, but as we know, like, this Italy, democratic or not, it's going to get a rework, which is good. A bit of austerity, though. The ongoing crisis requires sacrifices of everyone. But, however, we spin it, it's the weakest who shall suffer the most, as it has been throughout history. Austerity in every part of our socioeconomic system will, for the time being, become the norm. Classrooms may have to close for some days. Uh, hospitals waiting lists might have to be extended. And several servants might take home less money for the families. Yep, it is a cross we must bear, because this will keep us afloat long enough to act. We've had no other choice. It is what it is. I trim the fat. Beyond the simple budgets for our various social programs and the government institutions, we can save money through more permanent measures. By cutting away at unnecessary government institutions root and stem, and by pruning the staffs and positions of the branches themselves, and thereby reducing the cost of upkeep for these positions that can be filled through other means. Beyond that, a lot of other functions that the government performs can be vacated out of the government entirely and put into the hands of private investors and companies who are more than well off than we are currently. Privatization, it's called, and will allow our government to focus on its fun foundational purposes, no longer distracted by the superfluous tasks and ambitions. And then after that, we'll tighten the belt. All right, boys and girls. We're doing a fantastic job. I love intervening in Iraq. Uh, hey, even the motorized can do pretty darn well by themselves. It looks like we're going to need more tanks or something. Oh, we actually need more guns. Huh, we actually have more than enough tanks and APCs. We need more guns and casts. All right, let's move them up. Normal jet cast. Oh, we're not making any. Oh, that's not good. There we go. And infantry equipment. Let's go up to there. Is there anything else that we can cut anywhere else? Maybe tanks a little bit. Fighters, we can cut a little bit as well. That's fine. So that'll look good. This will look even better. So, oh, we have no fuel too. Let's grab a little bit more fuel. Actually, I see why we have no fuel. Go home. Another carrier. Love it. But we need more fuel right now. It is what it is. Hey, we cut these guys off nice. Trim the fat and then tighten the belt. The government has done all it can to limit their own financial wastefulness and overexpenditure, but that will not be enough to not save Italy. It can't be the only government who controls their spending and saves, but her people as well. Price will rise with privatization, and the people must be ready for that. Not all will listen to us, but no one will be able to say that we didn't warn them for this. We'll start preparing for the public through propaganda, and public announcements that encourage them to save and prepare for the coming austerity, so that Italy can continue to function now and function more effectively when there's money to spend. Oh, I love it. Give them some time. They'll be fine. Mosul. Or is it Mosul? I don't know. The languages, just in general. It's sometimes difficult to under... Like, you just see the word, and, you know, I'm a Native American speaker, Native English speaker. It's sometimes hard to hear the nuance and words that, you know, you want to pronounce things more correctly. Mosul? Mosul? I'm not really sure. So. Uh, let's see. Anything else around here? Please. I just want to get involved in... Hey, I, Mama's here. Farah Palavi Mama. Mm. Let's see. Ah, uh, yeah. Very good. So, we're going to tighten our belt, which I did earlier today. And we're done with the bottom of the focus tree. Great. All right. New age of dipl trade diplomacy. The grand interactions between the supreme nations of the post-war era seem to be more and more characterized by trade and treaties than armed conflict as in the days of old. While Italy has proven its ability to hold its own in the latter of these methods of resolving disputes, it's the goal of DC to also build a nation capable of competing in the arena of the former. The modern Italy will use its hard-won empire and resources to bring prosperity to its citizens, whether in the motherland or the furthest flung territory. A new Pax Romana is about to be upon us. And we're getting closer and closer to 1972. Wow. That's already July. I love it. Followed up with, uh, we had all advanced together. History has shown us that empires do best when all parts of the whole work in harmony to produce results that benefit the whole. Inversely, empires that prioritize one constituency over the others will inevitably suffer from dysfunction and collapse. We have no desire to repeat such mistakes of the past and of the DC. The various peoples and lands of the empire will band together under common cause of pro progress and prosperity. Italian and Arab, Illyrian and African under one whole flag, one king, one empire. The people of the far-flung lands have much to offer if we but allow them to share their talent with us. Think of the unrivaled power of our military, industry, and workforce if we bolster our forces with the thousands of territorial and colonial citizens we have in our sphere. Just think about it. And now, let's not think about it because there's a lot of different people here. But let's think about it anyways. Devalue the leader? Oh, that pains me. 
After years of falling stagnation, Italy is finally going to reemerge in a rightful place amongst the economic powers of the day. The Germans' meddling was a setback, to be sure, but not an insurmountable one by any means. Still, it would require some rather extensive reforms of our current policies if we hope to achieve the needed changes quickly. Taking it slow might work, but we now have voters who hold us accountable. Our experts have already begun drafting initial proposals for our first phase, namely devaluing the lira. If we manipulate our own currency just right, our exports should explode. Perhaps even more substantial will be the significant incentive our people will have to rely on imports when we have our own products. That work just as well. It will no longer be a nation that is taking advantage of, it will be the one who is taking the advantage. Interest will rise. Well, as long as it's already zero, I don't really care. Very nice. We're building a lot of airports. I ran out of things to build, so. But, let's go and do this too. There we go. Just in case, this will slightly help GDP. It, each civilian factory just slightly, slightly helps out GDP every time you do this. But if you do enough of it, obviously, it, it'll actually help you out quite a bit. As you can see, we love Pax Romana through our more diplomatic channels this time, and uh, we've got a lot of roads up. Oh, good lord. Even in Italian East Africa, no one thought it would be possible that a European power will build up the infrastructure <clears throat> of our colonies to such an extent, but we have. Because I prioritize our people, whether we abuse them or not. Mm, yeah, don't question that. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. And that's how come our GDP is close to 120 billion. Devalue the lira. Well, at least it, that alliance collapsed. That's kind of nice. Anything else? Hey, we, we, we're able to send volunteers, but we're not able to send volunteers. Or we're capable, but we're not able. <sighs> well, I, we have so much political power, we might as well do this. Increase special forces deployment? Why not? Well, Strategia del Cambio. Of all the tools we will utilize in our struggle to revitalize the Italian economy, the exchange rate will perhaps be the most valuable of all. By strategically manipulating the value of the prices and of the lira itself, we can incentivize an export uh, focus among our people, while at the same time we will be attracting foreign interest for the first time in decades. The money that American, Japanese, and German investors, among the others, will start to pour into our hands, and the rush, and they rush to invest in our new economic hotspot will go a long way indeed. Some might protest our gaming of the economic system, but so what? Money is what matters all right now. More bombs. Interest will adjust to around the level of the U.S. Um, like, military interest? Or economic interest? Oh, that's still the same. That's not too bad. 51%. Alright. Cool. And when's the next research done? In about two weeks. Talk to the workers. The workers have been the keystone of any system. If they feel that they've been abandoned, it is all too easy to lead them astray into extremism. One needs to simply study the rise of Lenin and Hitler if proof is needed of this claim. In a democracy as young as ours, making sure that this group can, ex can exercise far more power than they often realize understands that we will fight for the them. Better than any fascist or communist is crucial. We will talk to their union leaders and their spokesmen in the coming weeks to ensure them of this. Capitalism is often cited as a bane of the working class, but this is a statement born of ignorance. In reality, a capitalist system with an emphasis on a long profit but not exploitation can deliver the enhancements to life without the bloodshed inherent to extreme ideologies. <gasps> Do I see debt? No, 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 no. We don't believe in that D word here. No, no, no. No debt, please. No debt. And we have a total 16 nuclear warheads. Not bad. Uh, the Reich is looking not too bad, my friends. Uh, good. No debt here. We don't believe in that stuff. Talk to the workers, though. And next we shall grab better marines, even though we're not even using marines. And then we should talk to Confindustria. The Confindustria is a well-respected institution that has deep ties to industry and union groups. Securing their blessing and moving forward will allow us to disseminate our message to the business owners quickly and help in forming a stable backing of support in the future. The workers are critical, of course, but that doesn't mean we can forget about the employers so easily. We aren't communists, after all. Our dream is to see workers and owners working hand-in-hand -hand to create the bright future we imagine for Italy. The class struggle shall be a thing of the past, and we need to communicate our good intentions to those who run the national industry. It's always good to communicate. Without open communication, things start falling apart, and we don't, we, we don't want that. Like, even in real life, you got to communicate with people. I'm not saying you guys aren't, but, you know, it's always good to keep that in the mind. 
the bedrock of Italy. Prosperity and peace will compromise. The labor leaders and the prime minister agree that this is the best way forward. Don't take a word for it. Listen to them for the horse's mouth. The campaign truck slowly drove past down the road, past the assembled workers, each side of it covered with campaign slogans and posters praising the PM. Through the speaker system placed on top of it, excerpts of a recent speech were played one after another, with Fanfani's words mixed in with the words of various prominent union officials. For the assembled factory workers, the campaign truck was either an interesting afternoon diversion or an annoyance at distracting them from their food, depending on who you asked. Two workers in particular, brothers from a small town outside of Naples, uh, listened intently to the truck, even as it pulled away to drive to another factory. Turning to one another, the oldest spoke first, comment commenting on how glad he was to see the union bosses and the prime minister collaborating. A patriotic military veteran who served with distinction in the Levant, he said as a polar opposite to his left-minded younger brother. His, his younger brother folded his arms across his chest and listened intently, considering what to say. When at last he finally spoke, it was the surprise of his older brother. Despite what misgivings I have, he began, I must say it is good to see the prime minister refusing to blame the violence on the unions. It would be a terrible to have the actions of a few bomb-throwing radicals put us all out of a job. As he finished speaking, the factory bell rang, signaling the end of their lunch break. Picking up their belongings, the brothers returned to work. The politicians come and go, but the unions shall be here forever. Christian capitalism. Fanfani is a deeply religious man and has always been open about it. The DC platform is decidedly pro-capitalism in contrast to the FD, but that isn't to say that DC is ignorant of the many criticisms lobbied against it by intellectuals and workers alike. A particular issue the DC has been forced to grapple with is that with the fact that capitalism often promotes behavior that is decidedly immoral from a religious point of view. That's where the ideas of Christian capitalism comes in. The desire to profit without causing harm is a key tenet of this philosophy. Time will tell such an idea will be able to stand the test of practical application, the issue of efficiency. The first report on the PM's desk had been disturbing, but expected. Following an intense period of review and investigation by a specially appointed commission, the report's findings had been long suspected but not confirmed. Until now, the Confundistria, an employer's association, and a long pillar of Italian economy was hopelessly inefficient as currently run. Perhaps worst of all, no obvious easy solution presented itself for remedying this issue. Within the report, the commission had offered two possible situations, or solutions, each one equally flawed in its own right. The first solution, written by the commission's more left-leaning members and idealists, proposed to simply place greater government control and regulations on the body in order to ensure greater efficiency. Without a doubt, the leaders of the con Confindustria would fight such irregulations as hard as they, as they could, and it's questionable whether allowing the same corrupt bureaucrats to continue to run the organization would fix anything at all. To the other option, written by pragmatists and commission's old guard, proposed a simple fix. The con Fin Industria had been fine up until the democratization, they argued. All we would need to get back on his feet was the return of the old runners who knew the ins and outs of the economy. The only problem, the same old guard had been removed for being fascist without remorse. It is certainly doubtful that the population would simply accept such individuals regaining their old power. As appalling as the op options presented are, a choice must be made. We can hope that we can make the correct one. I don't like either one. Tighten the government controls. The current leadership is fine. A shot of experience is needed. Let them back in. Uh, why is there no third option? Just let the free market decide. Like, we want more government control or more government control. Pragmatists. I like the pragmatists. Uh, the idealist is good, but, like, if they're already not doing a great job, why would we reward them more? Then you make the exact same case for the experienced soldiers or experienced people with this. Like, if they already didn't do a great job in the past, which they may have done an okay job, like, I don't like either one. I guess we'll go with experience just because the current bureaucrats are not doing as well as they could, I guess. So, I don't know. It's, either way, I don't like either one. So, no deaf man worse. Despite what the FD and BN will tell you, we have made great progress so far in dealing with the many issues currently troubling the people of our fair nation, and we have the receipts to prove it to the people. Just look at the tax codes, where there are now more than a dozen changes that put more lira in the middle class pockets. Or see the new many neighborhoods of government funded housing programs that now dot the cities of from Sicily to Lombardy. We even have now incentives that allow even the poor citizens to pull themselves into a better life, of course. The people remember the good we have done when it mattered, we will make sure of it. There's nothing wrong with celebrating important accomplishments and touting victories that benefit the people. If we didn't if we didn't, some of them might forget who's really looking out for them. If we didn't do some of them, or something like that. There's no verb in there, apparently, or something like that, so. I don't know. More military police? Not bad. Uh, Christian capitalism. Oh, so now all the liberal democracy is going down because we went with a more, I guess, right-wing path of Fanfani. So he's conservative democracy for now, but it is what it is. And then we'll do an ethical empire for even more political power that we don't really need. 
Empires built on cruelty and greed are doomed to fail. As Icarus ascended too close and had his wings burned away so that it is the nations that prioritize wealth and immoral exploitation of their subjects, decisions to create into chaos and revolt. Thus did the Americans throw off the British yoke, thus did the Germanic tribes check the mighty Rome, and so on and so forth throughout the annals of history. I am a man who knows my history well, and I am not interested in the least of repeating mistakes, past mistakes. The Italian Empire, as we know now, was built on the imperialist policies that were not for morally acceptable, but this does not mean that they have to be the case any longer. We shall strive to work with those with whom we share the designation of citizen of the Empire with. The Bible has always guided me in my decisions, and I stand with my firm belief that Christ would ask us to uplift our brothers across the world. We get a whole lot of 15 political powers, which I'm not sure why we get 15 political powers, but hey, you know what? Whatever. And let's double check. I doubt we can do anything here, but... Oh, yeah, we can't do anything here because the Shah is doing quite well. Hey, good job! God dang it, I would love to get, intervene there, but they're almost done. It had been a tremendous spot of frustration for the entire government, and the PM in particular. The many banks that compromised Italy's financial sector had, no matter how many promises of potential benefits and concessions offered by the government, stringently refused to work with the PM's platform of Catholic capitalism on its terms. Rather, they continued to demand the right that if they worked with them on it, it would have to be on their terms. As the PM sat at his desk after another day of fruitless negotiations, his gaze fell upon the calendar of his desk. He had known the date when he'd woken up that morning. He had known the date when he'd gotten his lunch with his aides before the next round of negotiations with the banks, only now, at the midnight hour. Did he truly recognize the significance of the date? His term, one that should open with promises of stability and prosperity and had struck through thick and thin, was slowly nearing a close. The fight with the banks was clearly not going anywhere fast. Not with the next round of lawsuits and ad campaigns that had threatened to kick up. And all the while, he was losing what Harry had left with dealing with this. Many were... Many more important issues lay on the back burner. He'd never been one to back down from the fight, but surely now was as good as any time as any. As he finally broke his gaze over the calendar, he knew what to do. He knew what to do. My efforts are better at this point elsewhere. Someone is also... Perhaps the bankers aren't so bad after all. Um, someone else can deal with this? Um, uh, I don't like either one of these. Someone else can deal with this? No, we were hired for this job. We're going to do it. And probably screw it up. <laughs> and Hey, look at the fuel. Probably screw it. Hey. Not bad. Oh, okay. You know what? They said the debt interest would rise. I'm thinking that and maybe it didn't rise when it's negative 3.3%. We got negative 6.6% to get this to this debt. So are we making money this way? Um, okay. So the Italian way, Christian capitalism, which is this description. The new era has begun. Okay. All right. And the American model, demilitarized economy. Ooh. Ooh, I don't know if I like that one. 100% minus percent for construction speed. Ooh, that looks like it hurts. Ooh. I don't know if we want to go that far. The Italian way doesn't seem too bad. Uh, what is this? Nationalization of energy. We get better monthly poverty change. Lift trade barriers, which is okay. Um, the optimal voter base. Well, I kind of wanted to do the Italian way. Push for tax reform. More income. Not bad. The art of the deal, more political power, income rate goes down. With this path, we went slightly left-wing earlier, then we went slightly moderate earlier. Let's go with the middle one. I think that might be for the best. The new era has begun. Fan finally stood before an assembled group of DC politicians, backers, influential donors, and well-lit ballroom in Rome. My friends, it's been a hard road for that as that has led us to our historic triumph in the hearts and minds of the trust of the people of Italy. That triumph which we now attain will allow us to forever alter the direction of our beloved nation for the better. But remember this, if nothing else. The path that lies before us now is even more difficult than that we, we have just completed. Much time, effort, and toil will be required from all of you assembled here to, dr to bring your dream of a better Italy and a better world to fruition. But that dream is a noble one indeed, and with the blessing of God, His Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, we will succeed. Fanfani and Folani. The two men sat together at the table of the small Florentine cafe. A half-eaten meal of oysters and beefsteak lay on the table between them. On the right sat the Prime Minister of the Kingdom, his smile genuine as he talked with the man across from him. On the left sat the other man, a rising star within the party and committed Fanfanite. Perfect symmetry. The Prime Minister spoke in a jovial tone as his voice free of the usual stress that had dodged, dogged him ever since he assumed the office. I'm glad you agreed to meet me for lunch, Arnold. You certainly made an impression with the rest of the party as you... When you speak of my ideas to them, they all swear that it is like they are hearing them from myself for the first time. You certainly have a bright future ahead of yourself in this party. Perhaps when my term ends, it'll be you who takes up my spot as PM. For Lonnie smiled and looked down at his food. The Prime Minister's words echoed around in his head. He had long been swayed by the man's ideas of Catholic capitalism and Christian democracy, without a doubt, but and hearing such praise from the man himself was a dream of come true, but... 
He had the strangest feeling in the back of his mind, a sort of unease that refused to present itself into view. A most cowardly traitorous thought ruining an otherwise perfect afternoon. As he looked back up from his meal, he looked over the Prime Minister's face, daring the thought to present itself. When it did not, he sighed internally and did his best to re-enter the moment. Extending a hand, he shook hands with Pamfani. Symmetry broken. Oh boy. Oh boy. So we got some more research here. Nice. I'll grab some advanced jet transports because we can and we'll do... Oh, we can still do this as well. American model. The Italian way. Ooh. Well, the people needed a party that would work in their interests, and that's why they chose DC. And now we must begin the task of making sure that they see that their trust was well placed. What the people are looking for is tangible improvement. Signs of true commitment to our promises and efforts to improve the status quo. Infrastructure comes to mind not only as our roads are in dire need of modernization, but our cities must be expanded if they are to keep up with the current growth trends. Mobilizing the national workforce to handle these projects would have been with a further benefit of stimulating the economy if properly managed. The government gets better infrastructure, the people see real progress, the economy is boosted, all will win. The facts of our success will speak for themselves. Very, very nice. Hope you guys are having a good day. If you're still watching, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. As I do normally say now, but really, I do appreciate it. So, all right. Very, very nice. So, Parto Fati. And can we do this one? Uh, actually, we don't even have to do this stuff, but we'll still do one of them. So, peace and prosperity. The nation has come a long way from the chaos of Piazza Fanta. In the aftermath of that terrible tragedy, there were those who believed that the empire was doomed to the sad path of decay and ruin. Yeah, look at where we stand now, and all thanks to the successful policies of the DC and the vision of Amentor, Amentore Fanfani. From our furbished roads and cities to new trade deals to domestic, domestic tranquility for the first time in years, the choice Italy made in putting DC into power has been proven correct a thousand times over. For whatever further success the Empire marches onwards to in the future, the hard work of DC and Fanfani laying the foundation will be at credit. Cool. Peace and prosperity. Very good. The optimal voter base. An unexpectedly strong gust of wind strikes the table, blowing a pile of pamphlets all across the square. A dozen old, a dozing old man running the stand wakes up and looks out of the mess, a look of dismay visible on his face. The frame freezes as it focuses on his look of dismay. A prompt appears at the bottom of the screen. What the radicals would do in the situation. First, a group of citizens enter this frame, dressed in the best fashions of the youth. Some even wear a pin identifying themselves as members of the radical, various radical right and left-wing political parties, as would be expected by such radicals. Rather than helping the dismayed old man, they begin to play and frolic with the spilled pamphlets. One even couples a large number together into a ball and begins kicking it around with his friends in a makeshift game of football. As they laugh, the camera once again freezes on the more dismayed face of the old man. Another prompt is put on the screen. What do the DC voter would do in the situation? Another group now enters the empty square, each one dressed respectfully and modestly in clothing fitting for a formal occasion. Even the youth among the group are dressed modestly, with one of the girls present making the sign of the cross before going over to assist the old man. <laughs> wow. With careful precision, the various DC voters clean up the pamphlets, hoping the now visibly grateful old man. The camera freezes once more on the thankful face of the old man. This message has been sponsored by the Democrazia Christiana. Of course. Ah, gotta do it. Just gotta do it, you know. Survey for a project. How are we doing over here? Lots of airports. We love the airports. Airports for all. On the bright path, uh, we need other deal or we either one of these two. So, uh, nationalization, push for tax reform. I like that. The American model. Oh, man. I think that for now, since we joined the OFM, I think it's probably best to do the American model. As much as I, I actually really want to do the Italian way. But I think since we join the OFM, we'll do this one. We must learn from the ways of the international trade from foreign powers, after all. With all the economic turmoil of late, well, they have far more experience than we do. Just look at the Americans and their prosperity. Why not take their ideas and make them our own? The very notion of capitalism and they so cherished sprang up from our own city-states long ago. This is not a theft, but a return. When the U.S. took its place as an economic behemoth, was it on the back of practicing isolationism and protectionist policies? No, it was only when it abandoned those principles that it rose to the current en enviable status. With application of time, can we not pull off a similar miracle? perfection of modernization or moderation it goes without a doubt that today despite the mass of people and tension that's gripped italy for so long the common italian man is wealthier and more prosperous a prosperous than he's ever been in any point of history prior to today i'm sure we all had our doubts about the man and i will not lie i was sure Italy was heading into a disaster when they picked him but the results speak for themselves Fanfani has done a remarkable job as pm of italy and i'm sure all of us at the bbc's foreign consulting department can agree on that he switched off the TV in his main office, a small smile creeping onto his lips as he enjoyed the praise he had received. It felt good, gosh darn good, to hear in fact that those foreign correspondents choke on the same words they lambasted him by. It was a moment that called for a drink. Taking a small bottle out of his desk drawer, he was one 
One he was sure he would cause quite the fuss if the press found out about it, he poured himself a drink. Raising the glass up to the TV, he made a toast himself. On the other side of Italy, another man watched the same footage, a slowly burning anger building up the back of his mind. With every word of praise given by that foreign correspondent, he felt a crash against his own experiences, against the way the government and the corrupt bureaucrats uh, bad words who ran it had screwed him over at every turn. Enough, he wanted to shop. Enough lying, enough spinning, and sugarcoating. Nothing was fun in Italy, nothing. In that moment, he felt truly powerless, truly unable to make things change. And then he was struck by a plan. Retrieving the rifle he kept hidden in his room, he loaded it and pulled back the sl slide. A great trial looms ahead. Oh my goodness, what's going on? This is not what I was promised. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Parasol 4. Cool. We have no depth. Awesome. Keep spending. 123, not bad. The American model will be tra lifted, or next will be lift trade barriers. Protectionism is fool's policy and has not proven its worth since its implementation in Italy. Indeed, it's only little about hurting our trade relations and keeping our economy from thriving as it naturally should. Barriers to cooperation are and co prosperity as a remnant of a bygone era of rivalry and war. In a new era, we are striving for guided moral. Uh, principles and responsibility, there's no such thing as arbitrary divisions. We must think bigger and long term towards building lasting relationships that can serve the interests of our people far better than isolation. Let trade be free and fair, and let it bring prosperity to all, and let it be for the betterment of Italy. We'll see what happens. Some people won't like this decision, but hey, it is what it is, you know? Then again, you can't please everybody, but they are the deal. Now that we've lifted our foolish laws and provisions that have so long hindered our economic prosperity under the false guises of protectionism, we can get to the business of hammering out proper trade deals with other nations. We have so much to offer other nations, and they have so much to offer us in return. It's only natural that we come to mutual understandings that benefit each other whenever possible. Once the cities of the Italian Peninsula were the trade bastions of Europe and beyond, we can bring that reputation back if we play our cards right. Of course, these deals won't be meet concessions to other nations, but equally beneficial economic partnerships that will last generations. So come Japan, come the United States, and come Germany, even all are welcome at the table of negotiations. Wait, oh crap, we lose taxation. Oh, no, 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 that's not good. Oh, oh boy, that's not good. Well, it's the art of the deal, I guess, by not taxing your people. I'm glad I cut down the debt. A new bomb? Okay, how many times have we had the new bomb? Like, 16? Or something? I don't know. But too many times. We owe 20 nuclear warheads. Um, okay. That should keep us going for a while, right? And, there we go. No taxation. Jesus. Annual income rate, 40.5%. And I guess we'll do... On the bright path to the future. Who would have believed it that so soon after the heavy blow of the Piazza Fanta and the instability of the Empire threatening to tear us apart, that our long beleaguered nation would be on the path of recovery? In fact, we're not only not we are not we not only are we recovery, but we have once more begun to remember the warmth of prosperity. Surrounding the line between hardliners and rabble rousers within both the FD and the BN or DC is measured to bring the people together better than they ever could have. With new purpose and a forward thinking spirit, we have both boosted our exports, strengthened our empire, and relieved the burdens of the common people. We have made new friends and rekindled old alliances, and prospects of future relationships are high. We have no one to give thanks to more than God, who has always led us along the right path of success and victory. Oh boy. Um. As long as we have a... Oh, no. The deficit. It came back? No. A third tax rate, 13.5%. No. 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 A thousand times no. We got to cut, 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 cut. Oh, man. I could cut military spending. We could try that. You know what? We don't need an army, right? No one's going to invade us, right? So, if that's the case, uh, goodbye, infantry. Sorry. But it's got to be done. Bye, soldiers. Okay, that helped out. Um, can we do it even further? Maybe. This is a really bad idea. I got more manpower, though. Hey, okay, we did it. Woo! We did it. <laughs> Good tax base. <laughs> I got rid of all the military. <laughs> an unwanted farewell. The Prime Minister sat in his chair, half asleep and half awake, as he listened idly to an aide giving him his bra a daily briefing. It had been quite a morning, a quiet morning in Italy. A pleasant change from the constant headaches and stressful nights had been long sabotaged his time's PM. Economic growth was decent, and international position was alright, and for the first time in a while, the constant protests and social unrest was beginning to flow away. Years later, looking back at the day that would follow, Fanfani felt like he should have known something else was off. Sometimes, when he felt like he was alone at night, the man would play the events over in his mind, attempting to detach himself from his own seat and see the full picture clearly. He sat in his chair facing the side, or his aide, a fresh-faced youth just out of university who had been the most dedicated Catholic he'd ever met. Down the hall from his office, a man was sprinting towards him. His face coated with a shock, an urgent message had been told by the uniformed men downstairs to deliver to the PM lay crumpled in his white knuckled fist. A minute now out from the news that it was to be delivered. As he was checking his watch as he idly told the Prime Minister about the de recent demonstrations in Palermo, the Prime Minister wasn't 
listening as he instead thought about what to have for lunch. The man has nearly reached the doors, only slowly so he could open them. Fifteen seconds out now, the doors were opening, alerting both of them that something may be wrong. The Prime Minister jostled out of the daydreams and looked at the frenzied youth. The youth looks back at him. The time is now. With a shaky voice, he speaks the words which gets, would so define his remaining tenure as Prime Minister. Sir, I, it's moral, sir. The politician, he's gone missing. The policia downstairs are calling it a kidnapping. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Um, the Fia Funny Massacre. Oh boy, is there going to be no end of blood? Wow. Well, well that sucks. Uh, Kidnap has been issued demands, but he's been kidnapped. Oh boy. Oh no, is that the end? I was ready for more. I didn't realize this was going to be. I kind of thought this was going to be the end of the episode or the end of the campaign, but hey, it's 1972, and I think we've done a good job. And so Dusk approaches a new order. Thank you very much. And here are all the people who did stuff, you know, as well for this. So, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, I guess that's going to be us. You know what? People wanted, a lot of people wanted me to abolish taxes under Scorza. And I did it the best I possibly could in this campaign as the Democratic Italy. So, before we conclude, uh, it's still the OFN you see here. Uh, and it's back to still the same. We have, looking not too bad, we got Romania, Hungary, Croatia, um, basically Albania, but it was Albania. We still have Libya, East Africa. We have these places down here. We Oh, Iran joined the Einheins Pact. We secured Iraq, or the Iraq that, you know, kind of actually likes us, which is pretty good. Um, other than that, we have, of course, Australia, New Zealand, but not too bad. And, of course, Guyana down there. But I guess this is literally it. Um, by deleting the army, we can make more money. Who knew? But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this campaign. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you in a different campaign tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.